What's up, Internet? My name is Michael Cook, this is Blue Giant Media, and we're here to connect through gaming. Today we're going to be setting up and playing through Newton by Nestor Mangione and Simone Luciani, published by Cranio Creations. This is a really <laughs> multi-mechanical Euro game. It's got a lot of stuff going on, there's a lot of different ways to score points. Um, so let's go ahead and set it up in real time so you can get a feel for how long it actually takes, how involved it might be. Maybe you can step along with me, and then we'll play through a couple rounds so you can get a feel for the rule set, how it plays, the overall flow, and whether it's going to be something that fits you. So, let's ready, set, play. Alright, Newton. Here we've got a pretty decently... Decently heavy. I, don't know, I wouldn't say heavy, heavy, but it's a. Uh, there's a lot to it. It's not a light game. Decent medium to heavy weight euro. So we've got a map board, some different player boards, which uh, they're very slightly variable. Really, the only thing that changes is kind of what um, action they're going to be better at doing initially, at least, and I guess to a certain extent, a little bit throughout the whole game. Um, I think in the rule book it shows the boards like this. I tend to like being able to see it like this, but I can understand if you're not all on the same side of the table, it being different. I'm going to go ahead and set this up single player because it plays pretty much the same. Um, all right, we've got each player has a bag filled with their things. There is going to be a bag. Well, this is the way I bag things. So, not necessarily. First player token, if you're playing with more than one player. You've got potions, and you've got uh, coins. We've got a deck of cards that are for, uh, like, different scientist cards that are going to give different benefits throughout the game. Then you have decks of these different, uh, different action cards that you can take. There's ones with level one, with one hat on them. And then there's going to be sets with two hats and sets with three. So we're gonna go ahead and go like that. And you're gonna turn over three of each of those. Obviously shuffle them. So there will be three from each of those visible. Um, to start the game okay then we're gonna go ahead and dump this out and we're gonna seed the boards with some of these things so these are like uh, I think it calls them inventions we're gonna go ahead and put them out wherever we see that shape these are immediate benefits that you're gonna get if one of your uh, worker you know students lands directly on top of those the rest of them can get put back. Same thing with these. You can go ahead and put them out where you see that shape there. That looks kind of like a flag. All right, put the rest of them back. Then we've got a bunch of these little square pieces here. We're gonna mix those all up and we're going to put them in each of these spots here and put the rest back into the bag okay then we're going to take all these little circular tokens and we are going to seed both boards with these and you're going to look and you're going to see whether it says two plus three plus four players and you're going to seed them based off the number of players that you have so here this one doesn't say anything which means it's good in all player counts so we'll go ahead and seed those ones for a one player game just the ones that are blank so go there these are going to give you different uh, one-time benefits as well there there and I think that is all of them yep looks good okay put the rest of them back and we'll set them aside. Then we're going to grab these. We've got some more things to seed the boards with. We have these 
uh, different tokens here, which match the different types of actions that you can take. There's one for each player. So we're gonna go ahead and put them over here. Doesn't matter which one of these you put them on, just make sure that you've got them separated um, by type. So that they are accessible. Then you're going to take these tokens here. You've got ancient places and universities. You're gonna mix them up and place them in their matching spaces. The ancient places are gonna go in those three spots. And then the universities are going to go in these six different spots here. All right. <clears throat> Then these go in these spots. So of these, there's no extras, but they're just gonna be in different places every time. Okay, then these are, they're not um, gonna be seeded anywhere. They're just going to be placed so that they can be claimed if the spaces that uh, correspond to them are on the board, which they may not be right now, but I'm not gonna go ahead and actively take a look through there. I'm just going to set them out. Okay, now I've got just about all the other stuff set up. Now it's time to set up for each player. So these are the kind of things that are gonna be the same regardless of player count. Um, this does a little bit different um, based off of it being solo. In between each individual round, when you get rid of these and put new ones out, you only put two new ones out. But that's really pretty much the only difference. So we're gonna take this little thing, set it to the side, just, and you can put it on either side. It's got two different things of it, basically just like a quick reference uh, for a couple different things. You're gonna take one score marker, put it on the zero there, and you're gonna take one other marker and you're gonna put it up here to keep track of how much work you've done. You're going to stack three books on each of these spaces here. And you're gonna put cubes on each of the empty spa empty cube spots on this board. So it'll be eight of them. Then you'll start scoring points when you do these last four. So first eight don't do anything, but then they go one, two, four, and eight, which is a pretty good amount of points. All right, then we have one of these that's bigger than the other. That one's gonna start over there in Basil. And then you put one of them there. The rest of them are gonna be set to the side so that you can use them as the game goes by. And each player is going to have a hand of six of these different cards, one for each of the five different actions that you can take, plus one joker. Then uh, each player is going to get, I believe it's two coins right there. And then you're going to have a draft of these cards. With more than one player, you are going to give four cards to each player and then you're going to choose one past the rest. Choose one past the rest, choose one past the rest, and take the last card. But since this is a solo game and there's no one to draft back and forth with, uh, we are going to just go ahead and take one, two, three, four, five, six, and then of these six, we're going to keep four of them. And these are gonna do different things, but they can only be activated when you put your person on this space, this space, that space, um, and then once you empty this stack. Uh, I think there's probably one other way. I can't remember it off the top of my head though. But there's a few ways that you can do that. So this one, for instance, if I were to play this one, it's going to let me do this gear uh, action, which is moving over here four times, uh, which means I can advance my worker four spaces. And if I have more than one out here, I can even go like one, two, three, four. I can move different workers. Uh, it's also gonna be worth two points at the end of the game if I get it out. This one right here lets you take uh, action with these guys over here, equal to four hats, and I can again split them. So they do different things here. This one's just gonna give me one time, boom, six coins, and it's worth four points, which is pretty cool. Um, so for right now, uh, and this one's kinda cool when it moves over here, 
Um, it lets you move through, move three times, and it lets you drop one of these cubes each time you move. So you can go like one, two, three, and drop three cubes. Normally you only have the ability to drop a maximum of one per round. That's gonna really help be able to dig to the bottom of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that one. The six coin one, uh, the work related one, and let's see. Um, well, this one's worth, uh, I think I'll go with that one. All right, so we've got those and I'm gonna set them down like that. And now we're ready to go. So not too bad of a setup there. Uh, I did kind of breeze through it pretty quick though. So what are we gonna do on our turn? Each turn you're gonna choose one of your cards to play. Whatever card you play is going to have a symbol on it down at the bottom. That is determining what action you're going to do. And the strength of that action is going to be you know, one for each of those that shows on the board. So right now, that counts as an action with strength two of moving over here. That's what the little compass means. It means that you're gonna to get to move over here. So I can move two spaces. So I can go uh, one, two, or one, two. When I cross a spot that has minus coin, that means I need to pay coins. Uh, the other benefits, they only activate when I stop on that space. Um, so I have to actually go one, two, stop there, I have to pay a coin to get to it, and then I would get four coins immediately and put one of these cubes out on the board. Um, but the circular spaces, if I go just past them, then I get to use that benefit. I just have to pass over it. So uh, I could do that. You can also spend a coin two coins to increase the strength of your action. So I could put this here, spend two coins, and then move three spaces. If I wanted to get cards over here, I could go ahead and grab the hat that matches that symbol. And um, then you can see like up here, it's got the compass. Over here, we've got the hat. Over here, we've got the book. Over here, we have the gear. And up here, we have the um, compass and protractor, whatever. Yeah, no, well, that's a ruler. Um, so each of those corresponds to what action you're gonna get to do. So if I were to use the um, the cap there, and then I could spend a two, that means I can get any of the cards up to two, level two, um, or I could just get a level one. And you can see they all have different actions that they're going to let you activate when you play them at the bottom, but they also are gonna give you different benefits at the top when you play the card. Uh, this one will immediately give you coins. This one is going to immediately give you a potion. Uh, right here, this is going to give you one point for every green book that is showing right now down in front of you. And then the books, the reason why you're going to want them is because in order to put um, these bookshelves, you know, fill the bookshelves of some of these spaces, you have to have those books present. So in order to put something here, I need this present so that I can get, uh, get that spot covered when I take a level two book action. So there's a lot of planning that goes into putting the books out, but what you see is all these different point symbols, which is what the star with the wreath on them are. At the end of each round, you can look and see what you've activated and you can score those points every round. So if I fill up this whole first row, I'm gonna get six points at the end of every round after that until the end of the game. So that can add up. So filling up this bookshelf could be a really good way to earn points, but you have to satisfy different uh, requirements in order to put them out, as well as getting good benefits when you empty these. So. What do I actually want to do though? Uh, let's see. This is kind of nice. I might want to do that. So what I think I will do is grab my gear here. I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna pay two coins to make it a level two action there. So I'll go one, which is going to immediately give me another worker, which is great because that normally costs five coins. I will also claim this because that's uh, only for the first person who use, who gets it. And there's also things like this that say for each one of those that you've gotten, you're gonna get two points. And then for my second move, I'm gonna go here. Uh, when I go here, that's going to grab one of these and put it there. That means for the rest of the game, every time I take that action, the study action, I'm going to get to basically have it one stronger, which is pretty cool. But that does mean that this guy's stuck here. He's done. He can't back out and then move further. That's, that's it, he's done, he's got it, he's good. Okay. Now, I think I might go ahead and take that action and I can look over here and see what I might want to do. Well, maybe I want to work on some of those books, but maybe I want to be able to get coins. Uh, I think I am gonna go ahead and grab this though. And that does not get refilled right away. It gets refilled at the end of the round. 
uh, when everything gets wiped. I could pay one coin to put two more cards out for any of these rows. Uh, and you can do these things as many times as you want, although this one can only be used once per action. You can't use spend two coins and then spend another two coins and another two coins to do this, uh, you know, to do a work actions level 10 because you use so many coins. Uh, that can only be done once per action, but the rest of them can be done as much as you want. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And I will, I'm gonna try and work towards getting to put one of these guys out here. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to put it right there, okay? Then, what do I want to do next? Well, it'd be nice to be able to get up there. I'm going to go, let's see, that's going to allow me to do that. Yep, I think I'll actually, I'm going to do that. So then, what I will do is put that there and that's going to allow me to move one space there every space you move there is going to give you a coin <clears throat> so that's one of the primary ways of getting coins as well as there's just some cool things that you can do along there all right now that i've got a bunch of books showing here i think i'm going to go like oops i'm going to use my joker so that i can put another one of these out and I'm going to, since I have all those books showing, I'm gonna do a difficult one and go, I could do that. I could also do this though, which gets me close to that six. That is a difficult one though. See, tough decisions, right? Um, I think, ooh, I'm gonna to work towards that six. Working towards six sounds good. Okay, at the end of a round, several things are going to happen. Uh, you're going to, um, let's see. You have to choose one of these cards to move down below, which is difficult. I'm gonna go ahead and move this one down there. That's gonna mean that I'm one better at that action for the rest of the game, but it means I have no more access to that card. I'll take the rest of them back into my hand. I'm going to wipe all of these out. And in a one player game, I'll turn over two. In a three player, in, a, in any number of more players, I'm just going to turn over three again. And these are limited. These don't get reshuffled and flipped back in. So if you put a whole bunch of them out and they all get wiped, uh, you could feasibly end up in the end with you know none of these to turn over. Then I'm gonna look at all the different things that I have that have an exclamation point on them. Those things are gonna give me points or resources or whatever. So if I had any of these, you know, filled up or if I had gone here so that I had this token or if I had um, gone on one of these so I have one of these tokens I would get those points or points or money or whatever every round but as it is that's all I'm really going to do so now if you were playing with multiplayer you'd pass the first player token and continue to the next round so then let's see what I might want to do now maybe I want to well, I'm gonna need more cards so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right off the bat and let's see which one of these now i don't have another any of these now so that might be kind of nice being able to get that uh yeah i think i'll just i don't have a lot of coins right now but i think that's probably the best bet for me so then I'm gonna go like this to go um, up here so that I can put a cube there. Then I'm going to study so that I can take this bookshelf and cover that space, which is going to allow me to uh, use one of these cool people right here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this guy so that I can go one, two, three, four. That allows me to take one of these to score two points every round. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this, which will give me two points and a potion. One, two, and a potion. Okay. All right, put those back. Next, what do I want to do next? Let's go ahead and say, let's do the... Uh, I need to get some coins though. So let's go ahead and do the, um, Let's do that. And we got one, two of those. So we'll go one, two, and that's gonna give us two coins. 
which we could immediately spend to get three points, but we're not gonna do that. And then I'm gonna use the Joker to do that action again for three. So we should go one, two, oh, I'm sorry. Um, shoot, I was there. One, two, three, and I'm gonna use my two coins to go an extra space so that I can get on there. All right, and that's gonna give me one, two, three coins back. One, two, three, and then this says they get, a, you get to take whichever one of these that I want. And I'm gonna go ahead and go like that so that I can get two coins each round. Now again, we're going to go ahead and pull one of these down and it gets difficult again. What do I want to do? It, it's You can see how difficult it is every round trying to decide, okay, what is it that I'm actually going to do this round? <sighs> well, I think I'm gonna go like this, which might end up being dumb, but we'll see. But anyway, you're gonna continue going like this, you know, so now I'd, oops, I would move all this stuff over, put new ones out. Um, at the end of six rounds, so you're gonna play five times so that you have all five drawers filled, and then you're gonna take one more round so you get the benefit of all those different things. At the end of the fifth round, whoever has the most points is going to be the winner. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can score points, uh, but some of the biggest ways to score points at the end of the game are going to be to reaching one of the ends of these tracks, either here, any of these spaces, or to get over here. Because, like this says, that every coin that you have at the end of the game is going to be worth a point. You have to have three, uh, three orange books and one green book present on here in order to get into that space, though. Over here, you're going to get, uh, for each set of books that you have in all of your cards, you're going to score five points. Uh, over here, for each of the different universities that you visited, you're going to get three points. So those are the big ways that you're going to get points. Then you're going to get points from these, which I should have given myself my two points for that. Um, maybe I did and I'm just not paying attention. Um, but anyway, uh, you can score points there. The bottles right here, you can use them to count as a book that you're missing. You can spend three of them to ignore the requirement to put a book out. Um, like I said, you can use one of these to put two more cards out, two coins to increase the strength of an action, three coins to get another potion, five coins to get another worker, and you're just gonna be filling in these areas so you can get these different bonuses to get more points, getting all of these out so you can score more points when you put all of them out, um, getting all your books out, which not only gets you points here, but can give you different bonuses here. Um, the cards that you play, some of them, like this one's gonna give you a blue book and two points every time you play it. This one's going to allow you to discard a card in order to get four points and two coins, which is, makes a strategy that involves these much more powerful, much more viable. So you can see there's just, there's tons of different avenues of approach and possibilities that you can go through, which is just, it's really tasty. But uh, I think at this point I have covered pretty much all the different possibilities. Everything else is just gonna get covered in the rule book because they're you know, nitty gritty of individual instances, but that's the basic flow of the game. That should give you a pretty good idea of how to set up and play through Newton by Nestor Mangioni and Simone Luciani, published by Cranio Creations. If you want to know more about Newton, you can take a look in the description section below where you can find an unboxing and then my overview and review of Newton, as well as a link to macronovicgames.com where you can buy Newton and hundreds of other great games. Until next time, I want to thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like what you see. Let me know in the comments section below if you've got feedback, questions, comments, smart remarks, any of that good stuff. And as always, have a wonderful day.